One of my earlier videos was a complete guide to everything you need to know about smart home sensors. In that video, I talked about air quality sensors, but noted that I was not currently using one. Well, that's no longer true. In this video, I'm taking a look at the Air One air quality sensor from Apollo Automation. I'll show you what it does, how you can use it in your smart home automations with Home Assistant, and what I think of it. On this channel, I cover how tech can make you more productive, so if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Let's do this. Apollo Automation sent me this device to test out, but they didn't pay me to say anything, nor did they review this before publishing. So what does the Air One do? As the name suggests, it measures the air quality in your home. Depending on the configuration that you select, it has sensors for detecting particulate matter, volatile organic compounds, nitrogen dioxide, carbon monoxide, ethanol, ammonia, methane, and CO2. The Air One also measures barometric pressure, temperature, and humidity levels. It also comes with a Bluetooth tracker for detecting nearby devices such as a phone or smartwatch. This could be useful if you wanted to know who entered a room, for example. And it has RGB pixels which can light up based on the air quality or any home automation use case. As an example, it can light up red when the air quality is unhealthy. The Air One measures 61 millimeters by 61 millimeters by 30 millimeters with a 3D printed white case and black mesh on three sides. It's powered by a USB-C connector on the back. Setting up the Air One is the same process as the MSR2 and MTR1 sensors, which I already reviewed. I'll leave a link to those if you want to check them out. It's quick and easy to set up in Home Assistant. Plug the sensor into a power brick, connect to the device's Wi-Fi network from your phone or computer, and a pop-up screen allows you to select your home's Wi-Fi network for the sensor to connect with. After entering your Wi-Fi password, open up Home Assistant, go to the Devices and Services page, and the sensor should be auto-discovered by ESP Home and Home Assistant. Click Configure and Submit, and the device is added to the ESP Home integration and ready for use in your home automations. Once added, you can see the various entities and what this device is capable of measuring. For the most accurate CO2 readings, you'll want to calibrate its sensor first. To do that, just take it outside, plug it in for three to five minutes, and then press the Calibrate SCD40 button at the top of the entities on the device page in Home Assistant. Then you can bring it back inside and it's ready to go. Unlike a motion or door and window contact sensor, it may not be as intuitive how to use an air quality sensor in home automation. So let's go over some ways to get the most out of this device. By knowing the air quality in your home, you are not only more informed, but also you can take actions to make your home air healthier. The onboard particulate sensor can alert you about dust and pollen particles and then run an automation to run the HVAC fan to circulate and filter your home's air. If CO2 levels become too high, it can lead to drowsiness, poor concentration, even headaches. This sensor can let you know when CO2 rises to an unhealthy level. You can use this to understand what's causing CO2 to rise in your home and then let you take action by opening a window or running an automation to turn on a fan. A healthy CO2 range indoors is between 400 and 1000 ppm. I observed that the CO2 in our kitchen went from about 540 to over 2600 when I turned on the gas oven and stovetop. I had an automation that turned the RGB pixel purple when CO2 reached an unhealthy level. When this occurred, I turned on the exhaust fan over the stovetop, which rapidly cut the CO2 from over 2600 to just over 1100. As soon as the cooking was over, the CO2 fell to about 880. Of course, you can use the RGB pixel in any home automation, even if it's unrelated to air quality. I have the light turned red to let my family know that I'm recording a video. On trash night, the light turns green to remind me to bring the bins out. I was previously a skeptic 
about the utility of air quality sensors, but the Air One makes me rethink that. It provides helpful insight into the current air quality of my home and how specific activities like cooking might affect this. It was really interesting to see the impact that gas cooking had on the indoor air quality of our home. I could see in real time how unhealthy air levels rose when cooking began and then fell when turning on that exhaust fan and then again when finishing cooking. The included RGB pixel makes it easy to alert your household about such changes in air quality so you can take action to improve it. And the ability to use that RGB pixel as a smart indicator for any home automation is really useful. If you need troubleshooting help or just ideas, Apollo Automation is quick to respond on their Discord. And they have lots of helpful articles for device setup and configuration on their wiki. The biggest thing that I'd love to see with the Air One is a plug and play blueprint for home automations and home assistant. Otherwise, you need to research the typical levels for things like CO2 and all the gases that this can measure, and then configure automations to alert you when one or more measurements goes outside the normal range, and then stop alerting you when it returns to normal, and balance that logic across numerous readings. It can get complicated quickly, and a blueprint to simplify this would be incredible. I envision being able to customize the light colors, trigger points, and actions to take across each of the measured entities. If you're interested in an air quality sensor, this is a compelling choice, though it's not cheap. For $89, it packs numerous sensors into a compact form factor for measuring the real-time air quality in your home in a way that allows you to take action. If you wanna measure CO2, that'll cost an extra $20 though. And if you want the gas sensor, that's another 40. So the price can quickly jump from 89 to 149 depending on what you want. In general, full-featured air quality sensors can run you over $100, though some of the competition includes a screen. If a screen is not important to you and you're looking for easy setup and compatibility with Home Assistant, the Air One is certainly worth considering. Let me know in the comments how you're using air quality sensors in your smart home and any recommended automations. If you're interested in my complete guide to smart home sensors, you'll want to check out the video here. Hit the like button if you found this helpful and subscribe to the channel for tech reviews and tutorials that help you become more productive. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. You want to play with Play-Doh right now? Oh, would you look at that? The air quality sensor turned purple. Guess that Play-Doh is making us breathe in some bad stuff. Guess we probably shouldn't use it anymore, huh? Hey, I get it. Play-Doh is fun. I especially love it how it embeds itself permanently in the lining of our kitchen counter stools and in the gaps in our hardwood floors. I'm really going to miss spending an hour every day cleaning that stuff up.